Ba, 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 ba. Test, 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 test. Wow. It really is funny every time. Like, genuinely. Incredible opening. We really nailed it. I this is Behind you like the Bastards, a policy in which I c- try to keep the names of all of the Bonaparte straight. And yeah. I'm going to be honest, largely fail at it. No, it's going um, bad. It's going bad. It's going to get a them. lot easier soon. Eventually, Louis Napoleon is the only one we have to care about in this story. But we Thank are God. We are still we're at the last stage of there being multiple Louis in this yeah. that, are, listen, that are Bonaparte. Listen, this is not your fault. And anybody who blames you. No. No. Fuck off. This yeah, is this is this is, is, not this his is fault. the the concept of hereditary nobility's fault. This is yes. why whenever Edward Habsburg, the heir to the Habsburg dynasty and a big anime fan posts on Twitter, I send him a picture of his dead relative Maximilian the 1st, former emperor of Mexico. <laughs> um <laughs> it's because of shit like this. And because he's know. a weird trad cath fascist, but I didn't know that there was an alive Habsburg. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, there is. He loves he loves Catholic fascism and uh, Miyazaki films. Oh my god! <laughs> it's it's incredible. He's an amazing poster. He's like he's like an anime avatar type yeah. guy. Is that? Yeah. Oh my god! It's uh, it's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I love it. He's just like I mean, at the end of the day, you do enough inbreeding, you're gonna just breed four chan posters. That's yeah. what you're gonna do. It, it, he's he's a wild character. Is he a groiper? <laughs> Um, he's Groiper. kind of on the edge of Groiperdom. <laughs> he's not quite online enough to be one, really. <laughs> but he 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 spends all of his time traveling around the world, giving lectures on Blessed Carl, who was the last emperor of the Austro-Hungarian God. Empire. <laughs> God. Let me talk about uh, my homie, Blessed Carl. Yeah, uh, dude, your fucking family helped ignite a conflagration that killed tens of millions of people. Like, <laughs> maybe maybe shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up and change your name. Change your name. It's like, you know what I like about the Hitlers? I'll say this for him. Go, not go the, on. Not the main one, right? But he yeah, had yeah, family yeah. and stuff who weren't sure. Hitler, who didn't like do... The bad Hitler stuff. Mm-hmm. All of the branches of his family after his death independently decided to stop having kids. Yeah. Like they were all like, yeah. you know what? Been enough Hitlers. Yeah, <laughs> we, ro- yeah. we rolled the dice on this family enough. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, It's a nice way of just going mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, yeah. maybe this whole genome is Look, trash. You know, Throw my... Uh, my mom was his aunt. Not her fault. She didn't do anything, right? But I, I just don't think we need to have any more Hitlers. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to limit the Hitlers. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. You got to give yeah. it to the Hitlers. Mm-hmm. In, in that the right, other Kanye? Hitlers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kanye. I'm yeah. um, sorry. Uh, so. there's, a, there's a segment of your listenership who hates the soundboard i know i know for them and uh, there's no one i hate more than those people it's okay the people (laughs) that hate the soundboard also hate that i have a microphone and also hate that robert mispronounces things Mm -hmm. and so we just have the trifecta for help for them and yet they they, they keep listening they're like a heroin addict who who would would shoot his dealer if he could work up the courage so um So suck it. Oh, uh, yeah, eat this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you sit all over yourself. Pharrell. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's the deputy ops. Anyways, listen to Pod Yourself the yeah. Wire. I have a family. It is the world's only The Wire podcast. I'm Matt Lee. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. So, by the summer of 1835, uh, Louis Napoleon had met a man who finally set his life on a purposeful track. And this is, again, Gilbert Persigny, who's the, the ass kisser who convinces him, hey, man, people don't like the current king that much, but they love the shit out of the memory of your uncle. Yeah. You, could, you could work this into something. You can make some shit out of this. Mm-hmm. And Persigny convinces him that the Bonapartist cause is still so popular in France that this would be an easy task for Louis himself to accomplish. Within weeks, Louis was stating this opinion as his own, saying, quote, if the Napoleonic cause has left fond memories in the hearts of the French people, then all I should have to do is present myself, standing quite alone without even troops at my side before the people and remind them of their recent grievances and past glory and they will rally to my flag. Believe me, I know my France. 
He has <laughs> barely spent any time in his He's life in never France. Lived like, there, yeah. really. <laughs> More time in Italy. He he has a German ass <laughs> accent. And he, I know, I know my France. <laughs> if there's one thing I know, it's France. Okay. Yeah. I I was born in St. Louis and have like vague memories of my time there before we moved to Oklahoma. Would be be like, I know the people of St. Louis. Yes. Don't <laughs> tell me about South St. Louis. I know yes. them. <laughs> I listen to the song Meet Me in yes. St. Louis. Yes, don't worry. I will. I know about Ted Drews. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I remember about St. Louis. Dope-ass frozen yogurt. Fuck um, yeah. Or maybe it sucks. I don't remember. I was like nine the last time I ate there. <laughs> yeah, well. Like, you're like, here's, here's this thing I can't <clears throat> verify is cool from a very long time ago. Podcast podcasts that's right Fuck yeah love so, podcasts. Uh, louis napoleon sets upon a cunning plan which is that he's just gonna like march his way into france uh to this garrison at strasbourg uh where there's like ten thousand soldiers and he likes that because he, if, if he assumes it's i just gotta say hi to those soldiers and they'll be like L'Empereur! Yeah. and then we can all march to paris and this is he thinks that this will work for him because this is kind of how Napoleon had retaken power, right? Yeah, that is how he did it, essentially. That is how he did it. However, he did that because he had won dozens of battles against long odds and conquered all of Western Europe for, for France, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he had, like, a track record. He's a famous guy. People know yeah. him. Yeah, whereas Louis Napoleon is most famous for getting his older brother killed in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. before he does to his credit he does try to do a little bit of groundwork before he just walks off to Strasbourg mm-hmm. he uh, you know from from his base of operations in London reaches out to the commanding general of the garrison like sends him a letter being like I want to come and take your garrison to retake France this guy being not a complete idiot sends the letter to his bosses and is like hey the, uh, <laughs> the so, heir to Napoleon Bonaparte might be trying to take over the country in a little while, guys. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of just letting him do it because it'd be funny, but I thought I'd let you guys know. I don't know. Figured I should check in. I would just check in on this. Like It's I not in the manual. See it happen because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's going to fail. Could be pretty funny. Um, Na- Louis Napoleon is not able to convince this guy or any like generals, but there's a couple of colonels and majors who had like fought in Napoleon Bonaparte's army and are like, I guess, unhappy enough with the regime that they're like, yeah, man, we'll fight. So he gets some people to agree to back him in the French mm-hmm. military. Here's how the Shadow Emperor describes what happened next. At six o'clock on Monday, the 30th of October, 1836, Swiss Army Captain Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, now disguised in the uniform of a French colonel, attended by French General Vaudre and ten officers, including Gilbert Persigny, marched into the Strasbourg garrison to the barracks of the 46th Infantry Regiment, where Colonel Bonaparte appealed to the men to join him. Unfortunately, they completely rejected the young man and the name of Bonaparte, much to the astonishment of the prince, and from then on it turned into a shambles. Although they managed to seize the commanding general, Theophile Voiril, in his office. He then escaped through a back door and was saved by his staff officers, <laughs> joined by Voiril's, Voiril's hysterical mother-in-law and wife, who then pummeled the bewildered Swiss captain with a barrage of fists. By eight o'clock, the coup was over, and the invaders were behind locked doors. <laughs> Louis Napoleon loses his coup because the mom and daughter, uh, mom, the mother and wife of the guy he tries to kidnap beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, wonderful. I love it. It's just he doesn't like, uh, even get stopped by the army. Yeah, <laughs> the guy's well, mom uh, starts we hitting him. Almost did it. We almost won. <laughs> Uh, and then the mother came out and started punching me, and I was like, "Wow!" I was not ready for this. I, I was not ready. Anyway, this is I'm my French. Waterloo. <laughs> By the way, I do love that he mostly has a German accent because it means I can start doing my German mm-hmm. accent again. We can. That is Very why exciting. I picked this. I was I was planning this for another guest, and then I was like, spoke French with a German accent. Get Matt on the phone. That's me, baby. Sophie, turn on the Matt Lieb signal. <laughs> Je m'appelle Napoleon. <laughs> when you can't do accents, all accents are correct. So and the same people that hate your soundboard also hate this part. They too. also hate the, And you know yeah. what? Fuck them. Fuck them. Eat this. Right. Happy now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so 
A lot of people are very amused by this coup attempt. The London Times sums it up as ridiculous. Uh, the Frankfurter Zeitung calls him an unbalanced young man and asks, what on earth did he possibly expect to achieve? <laughs> um, now, Glory, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems like it was the plan. I think it was so, going for like glory and yeah. uh, you know something, something chill at least. At Come, least you it, know it, some it, girls it comes up a little short. So yeah. Since the good news is that nobody gets hurt in this attempt, right? The the yeah. most injuries anyone suffers is Louis Napoleon getting beaten up by two <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so Charles the Tenth is looking at this situation is like, well, nobody's dead. This is pretty comical. And like, if I try to execute him or like put him up, that's just going to be more visibility. And he is a Bonaparte, right? right. Like, I don't want to fuck that much with a Bonaparte because right. things are not, things are not great for Charles the 10th, right? He yeah. is not on a super solid and he just kind of, he kind of just wants this to go away, right? Hoping that like, he's not going to try a second time to overthrow the government. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just, you know, let's just try and deal with this amiably. So he he gives Louis Napoleon $200,000 in a bag and takes him to a harbor where he's put on a boat for New York City. Yeah. Um, so Louis Philippe is like, yeah, just take this bag of cash and get, get the fuck out of here. Here's $200,000 and has his soldiers take Louis uh, Napoleon to a harbor and he sails to New York City to have a vacation. I do so. love that, like, if you want to know why uh, fail sons continually get chances yeah. over, it's because when they do something really stupid that any other person would be executed over, you give them $200,000 in a free vacation. I, like, I agree with you. You know, it's fair to say this was a complicated problem for the sure, king to, to sure. deal with. Because, But, yeah, I think I think you got to hang them, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's kinda, just that should be the rule with coups. I think that's a regular rule. I think we've all mm -hmm. agreed to this rule. Well, I mean, we're having this problem now, and I kind of think we should have hung anyway. Whatever, you know, you know my feelings on on the former president. Um, yes, yeah, no, it, we look, can't they, say it, but uh, you the, know, I, I mean, spoilers. People. The lesson with Louis Napoleon and the lesson with Hitler, and maybe the lesson with Trump is that, like, if people keep trying to take over the government, mm -hmm. you have to you have to stop them permanently. They won't yeah. give up just because it doesn't work once. Have you guys watched a single episode of Pinky and the Brain? You think yes. he stops every time he fails to take over the world? No, yeah. the brain keeps going. Okay? Exactly. You got to hang the brain. So I hang brain all the time. As embarrassing as the the first coup attempt goes, Louis Napoleon isn't that put out by it. He has a good vacation. He gets to go to the U.S. He loves the United States, finds it fascinating. Yeah. He's Especially, this is a very exciting, mid-1800s, a lot of technology is getting off the ground for the first time. He mm -hmm. gets to see in person some of the first American experiments with electricity. He gets to watch, like, very early trains, which France doesn't really have yet. Like, France is still, in a lot of ways, a medieval economy. Like, like, mm -hmm. all transit is, like, carriages and shit. Like, they yeah. are not, there's not, they're not industrializing. Um, so while he's away, he does have a trial in absentia in France, and it results, surprisingly, in him being acquitted. Um, <laughs> and this is for, it doesn't, like, again, the Bonapartes have a lot of sympathy, and there's a lot of things that get fucked up in this trial. It's not really worth getting that into, but he gets mm -hmm. acquitted. Um, <clears throat> Louis enjoys the United States. He finds it a soothing break from his failed attempt to take the French uh, throne. He does if you want to know what he thinks about America, he he notes in his diary that American slavery seems to be, quote, a bad thing. Um, nice. So yeah. with, with, I'll give him that. I'll give you him gotta that. You got to credit that where is, credit is due. Again, would pe where people talk about, well, you know, it was just the times. Like, this guy sucks ass, and he yeah. looks at America and like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> this yeah, is this a really bad system. Yeah, this guy's doing fucking <laughs> shitty coups, getting beat yeah. up by a couple this of ladies. This guy sucks, and he's yeah. like... Goes yeah, it kind of seems like slavery like, is bad. Hey, this is uh, this is fucked up, guys. Yeah, this is this is this is really this is really unpleasant. <laughs> I thought um, my coup attempt was ridiculous, but yeah. this owning and people. He finds himself really admiring technology. How 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 it, uh, how enterprising Americans are with technology, how much they embrace like new things, how modern they are. But he also decides and concludes in letters back to his friends and family that the country, the new nation is deficient in what he calls moral force. And he lays this at the United States as immaturity. 
Quote, In principle, every American colony is a real republic. It is an association of men who, with equal rights, have agreed together to develop the products of their country. It matters little whether they have a governor or president for their chief. They require only a few police regulations. Here there is freedom to acquire, but not freedom to enjoy. There is the right to act, but not to think. Which mm-hmm. I actually find surprisingly apt. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of... Uh, that's- on, uh, Hit the nail on the head there, little Napoleon. That's not a bad summary to, for us now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that is that is remained true. Yeah. Credit where it's due. He kind of had our number. <laughs> um, so he had to cut his trip to the United States short. After about six months, I think he wanted to spend more time, see more of the continent. But then his mom gets sick. Um, and, he, you know, he's a mama's boy. He, yeah. uh, he returns home to be with her while she died. She dies in his arms, yada, 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 sad stuff. Look, they've all mm-hmm. been dead for 200 years. Don't think too much about it. Yeah. Once he's done grieving, it's time to get right back to his ultimate goal, which is still to become the emperor of France. Yeah, plotting. So he goes, <clears throat> plotting. He goes back to England um, with a coterie of backers. He does decide to like... Yeah, he goes back to England with this coterie of backers, a mix of bankers, financiers, former French Mm -hmm. military officers, and con men pretending to be former French military officers, and he decides to put together a more ambitious plan to seize the throne. And we're going to talk about all of that and his flight from Switzerland, but first, Matt, how 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 do you feel about the concept that out there, the largest freshwater bodies are just sitting around our border with Canada, mm-hmm. fucking fat and lazy. Yeah, pretending just to be oceans full when we know fish. damn well they're not. We know goddamn well they're not. Yeah. You know? Being anyway. natural borders to Canada. Mm-hmm. Socialist lakes. Socialist lakes. This has been a paid advertisement for the campaign to fucking... Nuke the goddamn shit out of the Great Lakes. Nuke the lakes. Turn Nuke it into lakes. steam. Use yeah. that steam to power engines to blow That's up right. more lakes. That's right. That's right. We could be nuking all the lakes by this time, 2025. If Think we get of to all work on the lowland we could create by blowing up the lakes. Mm-hmm. And we'll get water in Southern California again. I exactly. Assume. No one's proven it wouldn't work that way. Yeah. It, Science. It, yeah. Get ahead of it. Get ahead Blow of up it. a lake. Nuke a couple of lakes. Anyway. S- speaking of nuking lakes. Yeah. I gotta here's... pee. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Can I run and pee? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you okay. were about to take a commercial break. That's yeah, yeah, that yeah. This, like. is, this is a break. We've, we've <laughs> okay. got a we got a minute. Go, All right, go take second. it. Oh my god, we're back from outer space. I just walked in to find Matt Lieb here with that. Come happy all over my up. face. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, sorry. You, Did you, I go you too, gross, a, too fast? No, no. That's the way you do a yes and, you know? You just, you just exactly keep building, right. baby. I do a yes um, and. I, uh, my version is yes and. Was that okay? I always <laughs> like to ask that after. Yeah. <laughs> yes and. <laughs> yes and. Mm-hmm. Was I allowed to and like that? That's how yeah. I go. W- was that acceptable to you? Yes. This is why I failed at the groundlings. Mm hmm. Oh god! I'm just kidding. I never did the groundlings. I've never well, taken an improv class, and uh, it neither shows. Neither have I. Neither have I. I knew too many people who were into improv and decided absolutely not. Same. Yeah, never, never, <laughs> never hard, ever. Hard same. Yeah, yeah. It is weird because like one out of a hundred of the like improvisers that I know or that I've seen, I'm like, that's the funniest person I've ever seen. Yes, but then that means ninety nine percent are just. Oh, yeah terrible look, look every terrible improv person we've ever needed was uh was 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 just the price we all paid as a society to get tim robinson exactly exactly <laughs> and you know what still not worth it <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people want to say like oh well you know stand-up comedy is also bad yeah but at least stand-up comics are sad and bad mm-hmm. yeah you know it the is improvisers they're just like happy and bad and that's not fair it is it is very funny that like Anyway, that would would be getting too far off topic. Let's talk more (laughs) about Louis motherfucking Napoleon. So by 1837, when Louis Napoleon tried his ill-fated attempt to coup the French government, the first first one, he had already let himself become completely obsessed with the idea of taking back the crown of his uncle from King Louis Philippe. 
The fact that his punishment for that coup had not even amounted to a slap on the wrist, but in fact a, in fact a paid vacation, <laughs> meant that he had not been incentivized against trying again. Look, yeah. if if you spent a day <laughs> failing to take over France and got like lightly beaten up and then was given two hundred thousand dollars. Do you think you might try to take over France again, Matt? Lee? I mean, I would just assume that that's how I get more money. Yeah, I would do it a second. Absolutely. I'd be you like, have oh, not- that's a job. Apparently, my you know, job is uh, uh, trying to take oh, over France every once in a while. Look, Go to America. Know, but- have fun. Behavioral psychology is a complex field, Absolutely. but most people will agree when you give someone $200,000, that's an incentive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you don't so, have to be Adam Smith to know that. No, you, you really don't. This is very simple economics. <laughs> yeah, this is human so, behavior even. For, to his credit, former King Louis Bonaparte tries desperately to stop his son from con- continuing this course of action. He begs Louis Napoleon to take his gifts and his talents and pursue a worthy life somewhere fall, far outside of politics. Take an uh, improv class, yeah, please, yeah. Louis Napoleon. Yeah, he, he, he begs him to to avoid quote what are referred to as the great affairs of the world he's basically like look man i know you want to be in power you like the idea of like being this huge historical figure i was a big historical figure and it actually sucks don't yeah, do it, it. Sucks. Like, Not fun. he is he is desperately trying to give his son the best advice possible yeah. his kid does not listen <laughs> um he is he he urge again to his credit he's like Quote, enjoy some real pleasure during this brief existence of ours. Like, don't, why do you want this job? Just like you, you're you're a rich kid. You you hit the like inheritance jackpot. Just live yeah. your life and enjoy it. Like make some yeah. art or something. Um, Louis Napoleon is not going to take this advice. So <clears throat> the French government. My dad keeps buying me guitars and telling me to start a band and it's really <laughs> yeah. pissing me off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be in a band. I want to control an army and invade arbitrarily. Louis Napoleon like sits down at the end of his son's bed like, hey there champ, how you doing? I just wanted to, you ever tried, you ever tried cocaine? You might really like it actually. You know (laughs) what? Stop trying to get me to do coke. (laughs) Pay these hookers to come over and party with you. We got a rave room set up in the the feast hall. Why don't you just do that the rest of your life? You want to take some E with me? (laughs) Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love that he's just doing anything possible mm-hmm. to get him to not be into doing war. And he's yes. just like, no, daddy, I do not want to fuck these ladies anymore. Please. It is so funny. Stop trying stop to get him. my dick wet, okay? So fuck. the French the French government keeps heavy f- like police secret police surveillance on the entire Bonaparte family now. Um and this is again Louis's family are never happy with him. He gets his brother killed, he gets them forced out of Italy, and now there's like spooks watching their every move. So it's this is not pleasant for anybody. When the French government realizes that he's going to try again, they start pushing on Switzerland to eject Louis from the country. Again, they don't really want to kill him or anything. They just like, Switzerland's right on the border of France. So they're right. like, let's, let's try to force him to get further away. Um, this goes so far as, as King Louis Philippe sends an army of 20,000 men to the border of Switzerland. Like Switzerland and France are kind of on the edge of a major war for a little while. Um, but in and, and this causes problems for Louis Napoleon in Switzerland, but it does not have the effect that Louis Philippe wants it to have because war tensions between the two countries are high for months, which means the news is constantly reporting on this, which means Louis Napoleon's name is constantly in the French papers. Um, If you remember Donald Trump, um, all publicity is good publicity for guys like this. And it keeps him, it keeps him popular. It keeps his name alive. It keeps people talking about him. Um, and, And kind of even being vaguely near to an attempt on power is worth it because it again it keeps his name out in front of people he's learning through this louis napoleon the same lesson that like trump and a lot of other authoritarians like populist authoritarians are going to learn a long time later one french minister wisely noted at the time quote no one in france can ever again forget louis napoleon's name and soon he will be even more dangerous than he was before the strasbourg affair he's kind of the first and again he to his credit he's not unaware of this he realizes mm. like oh, even though this doesn't work it's just kind of worth it to keep trying because right. people you know if you keep people talking about you that's part of what you need to do in order to succeed at this thing yeah especially so, if you're like uh you know um letting people think you're just ridiculous the whole time yeah 
Yeah, and he's, at this point, he is. And to his yeah, credit, oh, sure. he, he does care about his adopted home of Switzerland enough that he leaves forever to spare it, you know, the trouble of being invaded by France, possibly. Uh, he goes to London, um, which is, you know, number one, the the Brits are happy to have him because even though they didn't have a good relationship with the Bonapartes, the British are kind of always quarreling with France. Right. And so now that he's contra to the people ruling in France, it's like, well, yeah. yeah, we want to bat like anything that fucks with France a little bit. Enemy of do. my enemy, dog. Exactly. Um, and also, like, France can't threaten England. Nobody nobody can threaten England right now, yeah. right? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, we got so, all the boats. And yeah, you ain't got no boats <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't got shit in boats. Yeah, you got a lot of people, but you ain't got no boats. <laughs> That the Queen's is, got all the boats. What are you going to do? You, you just effortlessly summed up 350 years of British foreign policy. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Planes ain't been, ain't been invented yet, <laughs> innit? <laughs> you got to have to take a boat here. <laughs> So and the, and the waters are cold enough uh, to be yeah. frozen, so you can walk over here. So you... <laughs> oh, that's it is a funny to think if there had been like one cold snap in like the period from 1600 oh. to 1940, where people could have walked across the ch- England would have been got nothing gone. left, gone. <laughs> absolutely gone, gone. Oh, so mm, that would have been yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he, uh, he goes to London, uh, and he takes with him Gilbert Persigny and around like 20 other of his big supporters, including an Italian banker named Giuseppe Orsi, who's going to be funding his next attempt to take power. Great Britain, Napoleon, I'm going to give you the money. <laughs> no, I'm just doing all accents. I'm losing my uh, mind. You are my Pinocchio. Yeah, Giuseppe. Uh, so Great Britain gold. gives them all travel documents, mostly because, again, they figure he's going to fuck with France again, which is correct. So he spends the next little bit, couple of years, living in England, living in London specifically. He goes to all these high society parties. He's he's very in demand. You know, he's Napoleon's nephew. He's Prince Bonaparte. Mm-hmm. Um and he makes a lot of connections with powerful backers in other parts of Europe who want to fuck with France for some reason or another. Um, and he starts plotting his next coup attempt. He also, you know, to his credit, he's not, uh, he's dumb in a lot of ways. He's not a, a complete moron either. He pays attention very successfully to the way the British Empire does things. Mm. One biographer describes him as being, quote, greatly impressed by the English obsession with foreign travel and exotic places. And when they say travel here... <laughs> They are not talking about tourism. <laughs> They're not talking about going in with sandals. Yeah, yeah. In 1839, while he's in London, the British Empire takes possession of Hong Kong, and the East India Company occupies Aden. Um, so that's what he means by travel. Yeah. So as his plans for imperial go- glory solidify, so too does his political understanding of what has gone wrong in his home country. France, again, in this period, is basically medieval in a lot of respects. Their economy is ancient. It is it is decrepit. Again, there's fucking trains in the in the U in the UK and in the United States and a number of other places. Everything in France is still done by like horses driving around wagons. Like yeah, that's a hundred percent of transit. Praying to God that the harvest comes in and yeah, yeah it's uh, it is, they don't got much in the way of technology. It's bad. Um, social life has also stagnated again because King Louis Philippe is is a res, kind of a, a revanchist. You know, he's trying to take things back to the absolute monarchy days, not with a ton of success. Um, and yeah, uh, the, 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 the emperor or the king's hold on power is just, is, is not great. Uh, Alan strauss sums up what Louis Napoleon took from this in his writings from 1840. The fundamental vice, which is eating away at France today, is the exaggerated interpretation of the rights of the individual, of his scorn for authority. Now, this is the real Louis Napoleon speaking. The people were already too uh, independent now. Yes, there should be popular elections, but the people must vote as they were directed, and that is precisely how he intended to run his future empire. Give the masses the vote, but all voting would be dictated by the leader of the country, Allah Bonaparte. Napoleon I had, of course, completely manipulated his national plebiscites without apologies. That system worked. <laughs> It did. So it did. That's that's his thinking. Later that year, still convinced that the people of France would back him en masse if he just presented himself to them in the right way, Napoleon attempted a second coup. By this point, he fully believed that he was meant by God to take up his uncle's legacy and lead France into a second empire. He wrote to his followers, 
From time to time, men are created whom I call volunteers of providence, in whose hands are placed the destiny of their countries. I believe I am one of those men. If I am wrong, I can perish uselessly. If I am right, then providence will put me into a position to fulfill my mission. Again, <laughs> How about both? <laughs> when, when people say, I believe I'm a volunteer of providence, and, and the destiny of nations is in my hands. I believe mm -hmm. I have been chosen by God to do this. You have a moral responsibility to hit them with a brick, right? In the 100%, face. 100%. Brick them. Brick yeah. Anyone who says that, give them a bricking. That, yeah. is, that is fascism 101 shit right now. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, part of why I picked him, Louis Napoleon, he's not a fascist. Fascism does not exist yet. Right. But he is the most direct precursor to 20th century fascism that you mm -hmm. get prior to that period. He is... And a lot, and we're building to like a lot of why that becomes the case, but you can see it here, this idea that I, saw, his idea that is very Hitlerian and Mussolini and however you say it, that I somehow, I as an individual embody the national will and have mm -hmm. been kind of chosen by providence to, to take this country in a direction like away from, to, to steer it in where it needs to go, right? Like that is very much a fascist attitude yeah. and it's 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 not again fascism owes a lot of its dna to feudalism and, and you and that's kind of why i find napoleon the third interesting is he sort of represents because he's also kind of a republican but in the way that the republic should exist to to justify my reign right um interesting guy interesting period he's in history. got the, yeah the, it's yeah. the uh the proto-fascism in that it's like the aesthetics mm -hmm. of the the past in history yeah. is what he's driving on like that's yeah. it's not just the feudalism you know totalitarian authoritarianism it's also remember the glorious past and i represent it in blood that yeah. is proto-fascism to a t it sure is, my friend. It sure is. So our man charters a steamboat with 56 men. Um, some of them are former military officers, and a few others are guys who have been, like, leading hunts and stuff. They're, like, the kind of servants who take rich guys on hunts. But most of them are, like, bankers, political functionaries, journalists, guys who are not going to be useful in a fight, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this, is his, this is his coup attempt uh, squad. And this is... I got to tell you, we talk about coups quite often on on this show. We've talked about the Wonga coup, which is a very funny failed coup. There's elements of humor in Hitler's failed coup and a number of other mm -hmm. failed coups. This is the funniest coup failure I have ever heard of. I'm this excited. this is this is amazing. <laughs> so the whole attempt has been funded by Count Giuseppe Orsi, who's this banker. He secured like 2.2 million-ish modern equivalent dollars. When I say a number of like how much money shit's worth, I'm always speaking in like the equivalent modern term, right, not right. like this many francs, because what does 16,000 <laughs> francs mean to anybody listening right. to this? Like whatever. Um, about 2.2 million modern dollars in funding from a variety of backers. So this boat with these 56 dudes on it nears the French coast, uh, and Louis Napoleon orders everybody, most of whom don't know what they're doing entirely. They've been following Louis Napoleon, but like he only keeps a couple of people in the loop as to the plan. So once they get off the French coast, he tells everybody, get into these French army uniforms. We're all going to dress <laughs> like French, regular French soldiers. Where's a hat? Please. <laughs> Put the hat on. No, I get the big one. I get the big one. The biggest hat is mine. <laughs> the biggest hat is mine. I get the good sword, but you guys get the other ones. So they all are armed with copies of French army guns that they've purchased in Birmingham. Again, <laughs> the gun industry, there's not really any gun control in most of, you know, the European states, a, lo a lot, at least a, a number of them at this point. So like in England, you could just kind of easily pick up copies of the kinds of guns the French use and, and vice versa. So they, they have like copies of French army guns and they have French uniforms that this banker has bought and they're kind of dressing as regular soldiers. Now, in the Stra most of them are. In the Strasbourg attack, Attempt, Louis Napoleon had worn the uniform of a colonel. He had never been a colonel anywhere, but certainly <laughs> yeah. not in the French army. For this next attempt, he promoted himself to major general. Figuring okay, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe the issue when I got beat up by those two ladies was that I, I didn't enough have enough rank. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need more stripes on my shoulders so people She wouldn't have hit me if I'd had me. the stars. <laughs> <laughs> if I had all the stars and all the stripes and people would be like, oh, wait, we can't hit him. Well, no, don't hit him. Look at all the ranks on his shoulders. He's a major general. 
<laughs> Not just a colonel. No. So <laughs> once everyone is equipped, he delivers a stirring speech. Friends, companions of my destiny, I have drawn up a plan. We are going to France. There we will find powerful, <laughs> devoted friends waiting on us. The sole <laughs> object obstacle is Boulogne, but once it is removed, final success is certain. And if I am supported and reinforced there, which is as certain as the sun in the sky, we will be in Paris within a matter of days. I've, I've slipped out of the accent. No, you went into French, which was impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then history will say that with just a handful of such brave men as you, I shall have achieved this grand and glorious undertaking. So he gives a speech. Uh, now, the chief military advisor on this coup attempt, right? The man who is supposed to be, because they're supposed to be building an army as they walk along these areas to eventually confront the king in battle, right? That's the idea. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Um, so he has a general with him, right? You know, because he's he's humble enough to know I've never commanded an army in the field. I should probably have somebody who has. And yeah. the general that he has to run the military side of this coup attempt uh, is Major General Tristan de Montholon. Now, impressive name, right? Here's how the book The Shadow Emperor describes this guy. Just about everything about him was either phony or bizarre, beginning with the title he used of Marquis. He was only a count, and quite a new one at that. Allegedly wounded and having served with Napoleon from Hohenlinden to Waterloo, it was all lies. Indeed, he not only had never served on a single battlefield, but he had refused to do so when so ordered. Not content with that, he had reneged, reneged on gambling debts and topped that off by stealing the regimental pay of his own officers. Jesus. Despite all, he had somehow hoodwinked Napoleon and accompanied him to St. Helena, where he became his final confidant. Promised a major legacy from Napoleon's will, Montholon had on at least two occasions administered arsenic in Napoleon's wine, greatly weakening him and leading to his death. And it was this charlatan, coward, thief, and murderer whom Louis Napoleon had unwittingly appointed to head his campaign. That is beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. I love it. He was just like... Yeah. No. Well, no, this guy is wearing all the right clothes. Mm -hmm. He knows my dad. He knows my know. uncle, yeah. Oh, yeah, knows my uncle. And, uh, you know, he said he was there in St. Helena. He used to give him lots of drinks. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> yeah, he, he'll he take command. He's been a general. Yeah, so. of course I trust him. Look at that smile. <laughs> it's great. He gives so they, me such confidence. He is a true confidence man. Now, I will give Louis Napoleon some credit. The boat guys he hired do their job competently. They get everyone to shore. Everyone gets to France and is on France, which is, given how the rest of this goes, kind of amazing. <laughs> I got to say, you know it's going to go bad when you're giving credit to the guys who made the boat go. <laughs> yeah, they did They did succeed in reaching land from they the sea. They succeeded in the boat going the way <laughs> that is, boats go. That is the last success. And in fact, the landing is not a huge success. They do get to shore, but they're not great at it. And so they make a lot of noise. Well, um, that's a different it, guy's job. Yeah. Getting the, 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 the captain of the ship. Oh, goes, no, nobody told us job. it was quiet, right? I just. That's, uh, di that's a different guy's job. No one ever said I was yeah. a quiet boat. Yeah. <laughs> so I take boat from point A, point B. You yeah. guys do rest. Okay. A, cus a customs agent hears them coming to shore, like a like a customs guy, a guy whose job is to make sure boats don't land in France without like paying taxes. And he like walks up to them and is like, so what's uh, what's going on here? Yeah. And they lie. They say they're soldiers from the nearby regiment. And they tell them like, we're from this regiment. That's the regiment billeted in the city. But they get the name of the regiment wrong, <laughs> which this guy knows because he lives here. So he's like. <laughs> That's kind of suspicious. Soldiers <laughs> usually know what regiment they're in. <laughs> huh. Also, the guy in charge speaks in a German accent. That's yeah. peculiar. <laughs> oh, us? We are uh, French. Yeah. Uh, serving 106th uh, Airborne. Uh, yeah. We are, Does we Airborne are the, exist? <laughs> we are the paratroopers. Oh, it's just one thing we know. It's we <laughs> are definitely not invading. <laughs> yeah. This so, is not a coup. This customs agent gets further suspicious because when he asks questions of the group, they there's not like, you know, normally when you have a military unit and you as another member of the military in an official capacity ask questions of that unit, normally like one person is going to reply, right? Because there's a chain of command. And <laughs> right, the, like yeah. the Someone is going to be in charge of that unit and he will answer for them, which is generally how things work in armies. Yeah. Instead... 
every time he asks a question, like people will be quiet and then like replies will come at random from different members of the group. <gasps> oh yeah. Louis well, Napoleon, <laughs> the guy what? dressed as a general, Louis Napoleon is too anxious. He gets like stage fright so he can't say anything. Meanwhile, the other general, Montholon, basically hides because he's never been a general and does not know how to actually respond. Yeah, yeah. So, and his number one thing is hiding when war mm-hmm. comes. So. Yes, that is kind of what he's best <laughs> he's at. Like, That's what I'm known for in real so, life. None of these guys know what they're doing. And the customs agent, like, confused, but like, well, they all do look like French soldiers. It's like, why don't I escort you guys to the local military base and they can figure out where you're (laughs) supposed to be? So they all start marching together. And they've been, like, marching a little while when one of the colonels, uh, former French army colonels that Louis Napoleon has gathered to his coup attempt, suddenly shouts, do you know who you're escorting? It's Prince Napoleon himself. What the fuck? (laughs) And And then another man cries out, Balloon is ours, and France will soon proclaim the Prince Emperor of France. Now, Blown the customs cover a agent, bit, I think. the customs agent, whose name is Lieutenant Bali, gets kind of suspicious at this. So he's like, all right, everybody stop a second. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> what are you talking about? Now, I should probably have mentioned this or, or earlier, but it makes the, the outburst that just happened make a little more sense. I should note, Everyone, including Louis Napoleon, is shithouse drunk. Yes, they, ha- uh, they very they were, clearly. They were to get their courage up on the boat. They are pounding brandy, which yes. is probably why they make so much noise and probably why they don't know how to respond when this guy starts asking really basic questions because yeah. they are all they are all wasted. And the drunkest of all of them is General de Montpellon. Hell so, yeah. Bali, Lieutenant Bali is like, all right, everybody fucking halt. What is going on here? When he does that, General Montholon staggers forward, slurring his words and tries to bribe the officer with a pension. She's like, wait, man, we'll give you like 15,000 francs a year, buddy. Why don't you just chill out, man? I could, uh, can you just come over here real quick? Just real quick. Um, all right, buddy. We're fucked up right now. Okay, bro, and- bro. We are wasted we are so wasted and i know this pretty little french girl she's right around corner she'll Mm -hmm. suck your dick dude (laughs) she'll fucking do it but you just gotta shut the fuck up just be chill bro can you point us to uh balone yeah like where the army guys is and just just let us know that yeah, just let us know where they're, they're at. And, oh, fuck, dude, I'm going to puke. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lieutenant Ballone, being the most competent person in the situation, just bounces. He just takes his guys. He's like, you know what? I don't know what's going on here. This is not worth my continued involvement right now. I'm going to go and try to find someone who's a higher rank than me to figure out how to deal with this. So, Good for him. Now the former emperor's nephew and a bunch of retired officers, some random bankers and functionaries, all dressed as soldiers and shithouse drunk, decide like, well, I guess we continue with our plan to take over the country. One of Bonaparte's most loyal men then shouts, forward march, and the group continues to head to Boulogne. (laughs) They enter the city proper at around 5 a.m. and they start putting up flyers, telling everyone that the king no longer rules France. Now... This was not strictly true. Yeah, well, you know, you fake it till you make it, bro. I get it. Things start moving very quickly at this point. The troop Mm -hmm. advances towards the barracks where a regiment of infantry protected the city. Their goal was to take back the barracks and its arsenal and convince the soldiers there to join them. Right. Um, So they get stopped by a group of five soldiers on the way there um, who are like, "Uh, hey, guys, we're in charge. We're the guarding this base. What are you? uh, (laughs) But what are you? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> you all seem very drunk in German. What's happening? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd aim my gun at you, but I. They don't I'm even have guns. Right They're not now. armed, right? Like <laughs> most militaries, you don't just like give people guns out of sort. Like they yeah. they don't even have weapons. They're yeah. just kind of like hanging out to like you know keep an eye on stuff. Hey, so, are you guys uh, doing <laughs> theater? Or yeah. What what's, is, what's going on here? Is this an improv troupe? So the guy carrying the emperor's standard, you know, the big flag with his logo and shit on it. Um, when they get stopped, this guy Parkwin steps forward drunkenly and he threatens them. Uh, another of Napoleon. Napoleon's men grabs one of the soldiers' arms when he won't listen to orders from the emperor. So the soldiers, they're they're still they're too weirded out to like get weapons or anything.
anything. Like they again, they have no idea what's happening. Yeah. So after a brief mild altercation, Napoleon's men advance again. Alan Strassshorn describes what happens next. And <laughs> advance, by the way, is a very funny way yeah. of putting <laughs> drunkenly <laughs> staggers forward. Yeah, stagger towards a door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quote Advance. <laughs> and Matt, brace yourself for this part. <laughs> Inside the barracks' parade ground, Alden is ordered to arms! Here is the prince! Which was repeated by a soldier on guard duty. Some of the men of the 42nd fell in and presented arms, shouting, Vive le Empereur! When an older sergeant arrived to see what was happening, Louis Napoleon blurted out, I shall make you a captain of the Grenadiers! Order and common sense had already been replaced by a carnival of hysterics and absurdities. Louis Napoleon then harangued the troops, offering commissions, medals, and money. Clearly, Captain Bonaparte, late of the Swiss army, was no more fit to command a garrison than a squad. Captain uh, Colonel Pouguier, who is like in charge of the actual garrison, arrived and, drawing his sword, demanded to know what was happening and where his company was. Some of Parkwin's men tried to grab him. Captain, I am Prince Louis Napoleon. Come join us and you will be rewarded with whatever you desire. But I don't know you, the captain replied. <laughs> you are a traitor, he called out. Then but turning around to his company, he said, Soldiers, this is a trick. Vive le Roy, fallen behind me. Bonaparte's men tried to seize him again when two more officers of the 42nd arrived. Freeing himself, Colonel Pouguier managed to notify the garrison commander, Colonel Sanso, and to rally some of his men. Panicking, Napoleon took out his pistol and shot an unarmed grenadier in the mouth. What the fuck? <laughs> so he just... <laughs> like it all gets chaotic and they start like yelling at him and he just shoots an unarmed man in the face for no reason in the mouth specifically in the mouth yeah <laughs> like, this guy is just like again this is just like a random ranker who's standing around like I don't know what's happening this guy's know. a bone apart everyone else like my boss is saying don't do it like dude I'm just like here and he yeah. just shoots him in the face Jesus Christ I love I don't but I don't know you dog yeah but I like <laughs> I have no idea who you are, man. Like, what yeah, are you doing? This isn't, I don't know who did we, have we met? I don't bro, know. bro, we're not friends. Yeah. We're not <laughs> friends, dog. Can you stop telling people we know each other? So this leaves everybody very surprised. Yeah. You shot someone in the mouth when he everything does, was he, just drunk he and fun. Just shoot a guy in the mouth for no reason. And we're going to talk about what comes next, but you know who will never shoot an unarmed French grenadier in the mouth? Me. That's right. You would not do that. I, I mean, you might. I'm not, not going to say never, right? I'm yeah, not going to say never. never. Never say never. We're back and we're thinking about shooting an armed French grenadiers, a thing I haven't done but could see myself doing it if I had to, you know, it depends on the situation. Context is everything. Yeah. Like what if, what if I get teleported back in time mm -hmm. to like 1812 and the, the Russian steps and there's like a French grenadier and he drops his gun because like, you know, he's scared because I just teleported through time, but I know he might go for it. And then I have to shoot him to save the time stream. Something yeah, like that. that sounds right. That sounds right. That could happen. You yeah. never know. You don't want to fuck with space time. Look, so you got to shoot him in the mouth. I have I have one piece of advice for people. One piece of it for advice. And it's never promise not to shoot a French grenadier without a weapon under any circumstances. You Absolutely. never know. You never know. Yeah. That's and what then, that's what Louis Napoleon understood. That he knew that. He said, <laughs> he, "Listen, I will do this. I will in shoot the, mouth. the shit out of an unarmed French grenadier's <laughs> All, mouth." I just love that it's mouth. It's not yeah. the head. The it's guy the, lives too, by the right, way. Of course, like, he survives. <laughs> yeah, you don't describe it as shooting someone in the mouth yeah. if they die. And man, and what a what a thing! Every day that guy's at like the ta the village pub, and they're like, "So why don't you why don't you get to talk, Gilbert?" And he's like. Well, I got okay, shot in the so mouth by a fucking You remember <laughs> when <laughs> Napoleon's nephew, <laughs> you fucking dick, man. You fucking dick. I was chill. I was even trying to fuck him up. <laughs> so this leaves, yeah, uh, everyone panics, right? There has yeah. now been gunfire. Right. Napoleon's soldiers are not, in fact, soldiers. They are, again, like bankers and like yeah, just, propagandists who write newspapers. Yeah. Is Giuseppe there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Giuseppe is, in fact, there. Like yeah. this Italian banker dressed as a French soldier, and then the emperor 
panicking, totally silent through this affair up to this point, makes his first action shooting a random dude in the face. Everybody fucking panics at this point. Most of Napoleon's men take cover, even though the French soldiers confronting them (laughs) still aren't armed, right? They have rifles, but no ammo. Right. Like, because again, they don't really know what's happening. So now they get pissed because Louis Napoleon has just shot their friend in the face. So they charge with bayonets. Um, Yeah. Louis's men. Because that's a party foul. Because that's a party foul. Just fucking classic party foul. Look, I will agree there are relatively few situations in which mm-hmm. you should charge someone with bayonets, but this yeah. is a good one. Oh, this yeah, is a I fine time to use yeah. a bayonet. So again, Louis Napoleon's men, being mostly con artists and bean counters, run like fuck, even though they they have loaded guns. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have loaded firearms, and they run like shit. Mamma mia. <laughs> Mamma mia. I I'm am a banker. for the money. <laughs> oh, my so, God. That is wonderful. That yeah, is so great. So they rally in the center of town, because the garrison's in, like, this fortress kind of on a hill in town. So they, they run a few hundred yards away into the center of town where they've been putting up signs, and they rally there. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, the garrison is like, I guess we should give guys bullets. This seems like we might need to shoot some people. Like, yeah. we, again, no one really knows what's happening. But by this point, it's clear we're probably going to have to shoot some fools. It, the so craziest they, thing about all this is it seems like the coup could have worked if he hadn't shot the dude in the mouth. And they kind of seemed like a it, cohesive yeah, military unit. Yeah, if they hadn't been drunk. Because, some yeah. again, as soon as they get in there and say, like, this is Prince Bonaparte, some soldiers' immediate reactions have been like, Viva l'Empereur, oh, yeah. oh, you know? Because, oh, yeah. again, Bonaparte's still a powerful legacy. Right, but like, then, that flag, tricolor, way better than yeah, white flag. Lewis won't say shit because he's, like, uh, panicking and anxious yeah, and also scared. kind of wasted. Nobody knows what they're doing. And then he just shoots a man. He shoots their friend in the face. And they're like, <laughs> well, I guess not. Not Viva Le Emperor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Viva Le. Ooh. Ooh, um, boy. So, can you guys grab some bayonets? <laughs> Some of Louis Napoleon's men, while the while the, the the garrison soldiers are loading their guns, Louis Napoleon and his men are like in the middle of town trying to regroup. They don't have a plan B, so they attempt to take the imperial flag and like run it up the the flagpole of like the big government building in the center of town. <laughs> yes. But they can't get into it, right? They like knock on the door, but it's like five in the morning. Nobody's there, so they can't get inside. They don't have so because the, the, at this point they're like all right prince bonaparte what wh- what do we do now like y- you brought us here plan a didn't work we tried another thing and that didn't work either he throw freezes the flag, up throw it or just throw yeah. it onto the pole so he freezes up and panics and then the garrison troops start to march on them and all of his men like break and run like a motherfucker so some of them get caught fleeing um, some of them get shot. Uh, most of them wind up retreating with the wannabe emperor to the beach. Louis Napoleon, as soon as they get to the beach, the first thing he does when his men are like, what now? Is he tries to blow his brains out with his handgun. <laughs> An honorable death for an honorable <laughs> attempt. He he is less capable of shooting himself than he was that one random French soldier, though. Damn. So it fails, and he runs away. Um, a bunch of his men flee into the water when the French soldiers get there. A lot of these guys drown. Um, several more get shot to death in a hail of French gunfire. One of the guardsmen calls it, quote, a regular duck shoot. Um, oh, the prince is hit by a bullet, but survives because his uniform is like thick and wet and it stops the bullet. Bullets were not as good back then. No, you, you could, could shoot people like, in mouths like, and they bleed yeah, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So Louis Napoleon was rescued by, from drowning by national guardsmen who like th- save his life and then take him into custody. <laughs> um, he spends most of the first minutes he's captured talking about how much he wants to kill himself, but <laughs> otherwise like, oh, he he's just, bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> Here, put, put some money on it. Put some money yeah. on the put bleeding some wound. dollars, shove some money in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So that's that's not a great coup. That does not work out well. Like that's about as about as unsuccessful a coup as I've ever heard about. Yeah, that is uh, egg on his face. Um, yeah, and uh, in that one guy's mouth. Yeah, Damn. you could <laughs> you really couldn't fail much worse at trying to take over France than he and, does here. And an incredible failure. It's, and it's, you, you, you got to give it to him because like he had the vision. You know, he, did. he said. Well, you know, what if we go there? Yeah. And he didn't 
He didn't think about beyond that. Nope. He just was like, nah, then we advance. We just mm-hmm. walk. That's yeah. just walking. And People then, will, yeah. yeah. He just kind of like, if you've ever, I don't know, assume, like been in a situation where you try to do something and just assume you'll know how to do it, but you've never done it before. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you go off-roading for the first time and like figure you know how to handle, you know, a, a real muddy path or something. Or drive you know, a stick with, shift. Drive a I'd, stick shift, right? Yeah, try to figure you think it out how on the hard go. can it be? And then you, you like go. lie on a job interview to try to like get a gig. Right. Yeah. Uh, he just... Um, he just uh he just he just does that with trying to be the emperor of france yeah um, yeah and he uh, you know like honestly i think he could have done it in that attempt if he had just not shot that guy in the mouth and fucking got that, too drunk if he hadn't been drunk if he had again you should probably like train for a little bit doing a coup like this if you've never done anything like, again bonaparte was able to easily coup the country because the, by that point he was pretty he was pretty good at commanding french people, yeah he right? had like practice yeah. and stuff and people this knew him this guy's primary life experience is getting his brother killed in italy like, right <laughs> you like, might want other training <laughs> og napoleon didn't have a colonel going but i don't know you yeah, like that. Nobody is, would have ever said that to him. Nobody would have ever said that. <laughs> no. Um, oh boy. Yeah, you know who does know you, Matt? Who? The products and services that support our podcast—they've known you since before you were born. Yeah, when, they when know you, me very well. When you quickened in your mother's womb, mm-hmm. Blue Apron and uh, and all of the other <laughs> Casper mattress—they knew yes. you. They saw you. They loved you. Eli Bef- Lilly Company. They Eli Lilly me. wrapped you in its <laughs> in its spiritual embrace when mm-hmm. before you were even a fetus. Exactly. They knew your soul when it was still part of the firmament of heaven. They so the are least my you soul. can do, the least you can do, spend some money. I love spending money. There we go. Why are, why are we why what are you doing? You trying I'm to get Matt ads. to plug his pluggables? Is that what's happening? No, I was doing ads. You've done all your ads. Oh, have I? Well, then yeah. I guess the fucking episode is over, Sophie. The, the, yes, that was my Let's point. Let's do some ads anyways, though, I dog. Thought, I, uh, I thought you were promoting Matt. I was like, okay, never. I also love that Matt got an Eli Lilly reference. Yeah, no, I'm, pro- I'm, <laughs> I'm here to promote my new podcast, Pod Yourself and Insulin. And, you uh, pod Yourself some insulin. Yeah, and uh, where we charge uh, astronomical amounts for I'm insulin. I'm going to be honest with you. I have an ethical problem with insulin. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hormone therapy is uh, is the devil's plaything. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. That's right. You know, mm-hmm. you gotta. If you, Matt it, Walsh convinced me of this. That's right. If you got fucking, you know, if you got diabetes, that's God's way of saying, hey, yeah, you're allergic to living. Look, God said it, called it diabetes because you're not supposed to survive it. Right? Exactly. It's not exactly. livabetes. It's not. Idiot. Li- it's not livabetes. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> wow, friends. Anyways, friends. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. uh, you should give Matt Matt's pod five stars because he has a baby. Is that I, do? I have a baby. Yeah, give it five uh, stars. Five stars in a review. Uh, you know, uh, pod or, yourself the wire, or if you like the Sopranos, pod yourself a gun. We covered all of the Sopranos. I, I'm gonna we, try. Th- I'm gonna try something, Matt. I'm gonna try something for your baby. Oh, we please. have you know somewhere around like a million ish people listening. You know, as to an episode or so in general. I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to try mm-hmm. because who knows who who's listening. Look, if you're out there yeah, and you're a crazy rich person with a bunch of gold in a basement, yes. s- send all that gold to Matt Lieb. Yeah, Absolutely. send it right on, send it on. Somebody out you, there's got gold in the basement. You don't need it. Give it to Matt Lieb and his baby. What do you need it for? You don't need it. I have a baby. I have mouth He's got a feed. baby. Send him that gold. Send me that gold www.sendmattleapgold.com slash I have a baby dot htm. Mm-hmm. That's your sub stack, right? That's my sub stack. htm and dot vodka. <laughs> yeah, dot vodka. Uh, and if you can't remember all that, uh, patreon.com slash fraudcast. That is uh, the that is the umbrella of podcast of all the pod yourself a gun, pod yourself mm-hmm. the wire. That is the OG where me and Vince Mancini, who you should have on here. He's a wonderful mm-hmm. uh, film critic and a uh, beautiful little Italian man. Now, what are the odds? Do you know if he might be related to Boom Boom Mancini, the boxer who killed Duck Koo Kim? I don't know if he is he related to Kim any notable Mancinis. I think there's like one. Ask him. 
Ask him. Ask him. Are oh. you are you kin to Boom Boom Mancini? Because there's ask a him. pretty a pretty good Warren Zevon song about his relative in that case. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him about it, but I definitely asked him if he was related to Mancini of Mancini's Sleep World, which is a great mattress store in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, and he is well. not. Haven't seen and it. He's not. Uh, he's not related to Henry Mancini, the guy who wrote Moon River, which uh, great song. So what if uh, what if Boom Boom Mancini fought the Mancini who wrote Moon River? Do you think dude. he would also kill that guy? Probably. Well, I think he could kill whatever Mancini wanted to. I'm yeah. trying to kill Vince. Well, there you go. Anyway, we at Behind the Bastards will check out to see if. Vince Mancini wants to do a podcast and is related to the guy from the Warren Zevon song. Check out Pod Yourself a Gun. Um, check out Matt Lieb on the internet and send him your gold. And Please find do. my novel, After the Revolution, wherever books are sold. And? Live stream. Thank oh, you. shit. Sophie, do the live stream ad, please. Oh, God. <clears throat> we, I love how I knew it. We <laughs> at Behind the Bastards are doing a, a live stream uh, virtual show on December the 8th with Margaret Kiljoy. Uh, you can yeah! find, thank you. You can find tickets, uh, the link to tickets in the description. You can find the uh, link to tickets on our socials and uh, it's momenthouse.co slash BTB. Yeah. Check it yeah. out. Slash. I'm going to watch. So am I. Well, you're going to have to. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> Go with Christ, my children. Bye. Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, visit our website, coolzonemedia.com, or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.